Hi everyone and welcome to another video of uh, Linux. My name is Tia from uh, DevOps Easy Learning. And today we'll be going through what is uh, cloud computing, right? Somebody might ask a question. Yeah, this is just a Linux uh, video. Why are we talking about uh, cloud computing? Now, let us kind of dive in a little bit and see why we might have this term here called cloud computing, right? As you guys remember uh, back in the day, what was going on? Uh, before we were having some stuff here, we we're having some stuff basically called what a data center, which means a company, let's say Bank of America, for instance, they will kind of have maybe um, one little office here. And when you go to Bank of America, you will see some uh, lady here with uh, some computers here, right? Little computer here, and they use this to basically access your information. And do you think that uh, everything that they are trying to access, basically, it is stored on this computer? The answer is no, right? Where where do we store all this stuff? Basically, what happened is that behind Bank of America back in the day, for instance, we have something called data center, like today they might still have the same thing, right? And in this data center, they will have some giant server here. And that is where they install something here called a Linux operating system. And they will go ahead and kind of host all the program and all the data that uh, this uh, guy here is pulling. It is kind of pulling straight from a server here, right? And they have to kind of maintain this data center and this is really, really secure. That means they will connect to this massive server here over something called SSL, or if you are, they are using a Linux operating system, which is just a secure shell and kind of access information, which means uh, when you are in this little location here, there is no server and you don't even know where the server is. Even the, this guy walking here sometime, they don't even know where the server is, but they just access, right? And what, what happened here is that uh, Bank of America or any company out there back in the day, they will go ahead and kind of buy all this giant server, set this server up, make sure that they maintain it, right? They maintain it and they will go ahead also and hire folks like uh, like Linux system administrator that will be in here networking. They are going to pay for the building. They will have uh, a security guy there, the security man that will be there and take care of everything. And let's see, in 2006, basically, that is where uh, like Jack Bezos and also Microsoft, they basically noticed that this was a big problem. And what happened is that they basically like kind of sat down and think and say hey what are we going to do how can we kind of help right and that is why like maybe check Bezos basically launched something uh, out there called um, AWS which is just called Amazon Web Services and Microsoft launched another one called Azure which is just a cloud what happened is that they basically say hey we are going to launch all this infrastructure here and when we launch this infrastructure, we are going to create, and they, when they launch all the entire infrastructure, they basically create a platform, a platform which is like a website, right? Which is like a, a website. And when they basically create that website, they want companies now to kind of sign up in their website. And when companies sign up in their website, they will be able to kind of create a Linux VM from their data center. That means they have a data center and within this data center, they launch all the giant server. They manage everything. They manage all the resources. They make sure that all these server are up and running 24 seven. They make sure that the location is secure. They pay for the building and everything and convince the convincing company out there and say, hey, we have this setup, right? We don't want you to kind of set up everything by yourself. We set everything and you just come and use it. The only thing that you need to do is that when you use something, you just go ahead and pay for what you use. Wow. And when they say that company kind of study that and realize that they are going to earn a lot of money, I myself, I'm going to do so because I will not pay for the building. I'm not going to pay anybody to manage all this. The only thing is that I don't care about the hardware, about the server, where I'm going to deploy my application, or I don't care about 
a server later i want to launch a linux server in the cloud i don't waste time it's going to take me a matter of, of minute right but if you want to do that in my own data center i need to go ahead and order all the pieces call somebody to put it together wire all the networking connect everything before it can be used this is all taken care by the cloud provider and that is why company just start to check it and define it valuable right and they start moving into a cloud and that is where we start having some stuff called cloud migration and that is where we kind of create they create something now called a cloud computing a cloud computing right and all companies start some a lot of company basically start migrating all their data center into the cloud to basically take advantage of the cloud right what is the cloud in layman uh manner a cloud is just where it's just a little website like a normal website that you go ahead and sign up but from that website you can basically go ahead and access resources or you can go ahead and access servers create servers within a particular data center that belongs to a cloud provider right that belongs to a cloud provider now if you kind of hit here, as you can see here, what happened here is that, what happened here is that you can basically decide to take everything and you put it in the cloud. Or you can take a portion, you put it in the cloud and you can wire the network, right? You can wire the, the network so that all, all the resources that you will have in the cloud it will be able to communicate with the one that you have like on premise and when we say on premise here this is basically your own personal data center and here you have some stuff here in the cloud right and what are some issue before the cloud we have this one here called scalability what does that mean we cannot scale let's see scalability issue let's see first of all you have two linux server here to do something and tomorrow the workload is too much and this two linux server cannot handle the traffic no more you need to go ahead and order one more linux server you configure everything you add it on the network that means now you have three let's take for instance black friday let's see when it is black friday what happened you guys are going to Amazon a lot or I myself, I'm there to shop, right? Or Walmart or any website out there. And let's say that website was built just to support a thousand users. What happened is that we'll find out that 10, like 5,000 users basically there coming maybe on Black Friday, which means if we're having three servers here, we need more than that to handle the traffic to handle the traffic here right during black friday now you have two alternatives here though you can go ahead here and when it's time for black friday you order more server and you plug those configure and put on the network though. but when you put those on the network what will happen at the end of black friday you have half of those server idle idle in it mean they are not doing anything what happened? You are losing money because you have servers that are not doing anything, right? And what will happen if somebody will say, do not worry, you can start with three. And when you need more traffic, you can even add even 10. And when the traffic is going down, you can go ahead with the traffic is going down, it will go ahead and scale down also automatically. That means you, you needed five to handle your entire traffic. When the traffic is added, five more is also added to handle the entire traffic. When the traffic goes down, far more server will go ahead and shut down. And you can only pay for what you use. Oh, here, you have money that you stock here. You stock money here, you stock five more servers here that are not doing anything. And it's going to wait for maybe next year when we have another Black Friday to do something. Or oh, here, a cloud provider will convince you and say, hey, when you need five more servers, 
we launch it for you. You can go and where I use it when you don't need it, you shut it down and you don't pay for anything. That means tomorrow, if you like, you don't need uh, AWS services, you just close your account. That's it. You pay for only what you use. You don't need to pay anything. You don't need to say, where am I going to put on this server, right? A maintenance issue. When you have a data center, everything you need to maintain. You need to hire Linux system administrator. You need to hire network engineer so that they can maintain that, right? You lose a lot of money because of what servers are idle, right? And what is the pros, uh, uh, the pros of the cloud, right? We can easily scale, like I explained. You can say, okay, today five, tomorrow five more. And you can also remove five as you want. And you can delete everything and you just pay as you go module, right? Cost saving because of we pay just for what we use, and that is correct. Soft server maintenance issue. Here, we don't have issue no more with server maintenance and also auto scaling and high availability. High availability is just like in the cloud. You have this possibility to launch your resource within multiple data center because a cloud provider is saying that, hey, if you want to launch three servers, you can go ahead and launch one here in, let's say you're in Texas. It can, they can say, okay, they will create one data center in Dallas. They will create another one in Houston. They will create another one here in Austin, for instance. And if you want to launch three servers, please put one in Dallas, go ahead and put another one here in Houston, put another one here in Austin, right? Which means your three servers are running in three different data center. Which means, let's say you don't get flooded, what will happen? You still have two more servers. Let's say Dallas get flooded or something happen, this data center is down, you still have one more running here, which is what we call highly available, right? If you want to do that, and own your own data center, that will be really, really expensive because you need to have three data center. Oh, company will not afford that money and that might have just maybe one data center and launch all these three servers in that particular data center. And let's say this, this data center, it is in Houston. And if Houston get flooded, what happened? They lose everything. And they have something here called a single point of failure. Because when you design an architecture in IT, that if something crash, it shut down everything, we will say in IT that you have a single point of failure. And the cloud basically resolve that issue with something that we call the high availability, right? Why this in Linux? Because why going through uh, a, a Linux course, basically, you need to go in a cloud and you need to launch a virtual machine, right? And when they put all those stuff in the cloud, that is where they call those stuff virtual. Virtual. Why virtual? It is virtual because you cannot touch it. You cannot touch the physical server, right? You access it through the website and the physical server is stored somewhere in the data center that you don't know. And that is why this word virtual basically come up, right? And we'll be launching virtual machine when we are going through Linux to go ahead and do hands-on. That's it for this video of introduction to cloud computing in terms of uh, Linux, right? Please, if you like this video, please let us know in the comment below. Uh, let us know in the comment below. And also, please, if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so. Also, make sure that you follow us on social media, such as uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and so on. Bye-bye. Thank you.